Branch and I was born and raised in Roseburg, Oregon. Have lived there all my life. When I was a child, we camped and fished and then eventually I found my way to fly fishing. I haven't gone back to the other side yet. <laughs> My first diagnosis was at age 37, and uh, my children were young, so my biggest concerns were, was I gonna get through this, and what, how are the kids and my husband gonna manage without me, being the you know household director and all. <laughs> but I, I got my treatment and I was good. And then a couple years later, I found fly fishing, and uh, I found that that was my zen place, and my family didn't enjoy fishing and that was okay. It was kind of my place to go and get away from the stresses of work and life and didn't have to think about cancer and you know, you're on the river and it's like a Zen place for me. And uh, that's, that's kind of how I got started fly fishing. So it just kind of blossomed from there. Okay, whatever you see when I'm not looking, I told you a while ago how that works. I was turning my head to listen to what you're saying. <laughs> And through fly fishing, I would say that um, I have met a lot of wonderful people and made some of my lifelong friends through fly fishing. Um, it's just a, a great environment and a good community to be a part of. Oh, got it. Nice one. Get a double. It's your turn. Get one of those on. So <laughs> when I'm fishing and you've got that dry fly on the water, and there's that anticipation of that fish coming. And they come up and they come up and they do a drive-by. <laughs> That's a little bit frustrating, but if you're patient, yeah. sometimes they'll come up for a Perfect. second look and your heart races a little bit and you know, it's, uh, it, it's like nothing else. And, and the good part is that unlike hunting or something, you know that if you're careful, you can release that fish to be caught another day. great two days of fishing and if you haven't fished on the Mackenzie River you really need to to make a point to do that um, the water's clear and the fish are plentiful most of the time if you know what you're doing in certain parts of it <laughs> and uh, I really really enjoyed fishing up here those two days and days were a little bit challenging for me as far as physical because of some issues I've been having but you know sometimes you just forget about those for the moment and you don't have to think about the discomfort of the bones or the pain or or any of that and uh, you just kind of work through it without even realizing it because that's kind of what being on the water and fly fishing can do for you. I left the day thinking maybe we caught 20. Kelsey was just sure we caught over 30, but she's the guide and she wants you to come back. No. <laughs> but we had a lot of great action that day. Water was beautiful. It was so peaceful out there. There's a few people that can call me Barbie and it doesn't bother me, but otherwise I would tell them I like to be called Barb. I found out that I had breast cancer in um, probably November of 2013, but I discovered a lump um, myself. Getting cancer now, it seems so prevalent, uh, all different types, not just breast cancer, which is actually a lucky one because there's so much research done and so uh, such good treatment for. Although, you know, one in eight women in 
the United States gets um, breast cancer, it's, um, you just never know whether you're going to be one of them. So you have to live your life um, as stress-free as you can and um, as healthy as you can to try and reduce those risk factors. first gift that I ever got from my husband before we were married was a fly fishing license. My husband was an avid fly fisherman all of his life and I didn't know much about it and I just it just seemed so complicated and hard to do it on the river. I was exposed to it on a long trip up the Alcan Highway on a kind of remote river. I'd been watching it so many years that I kind of knew what to do. Oh yeah, there you go, there you go. Right tip up, girl. Yeah, bar. I continued fishing and catching fish for the next hour and a half. I could have stayed up all night. And from that moment, I knew that fly fishing was something I really wanted to pursue. I just like the solitude. I'm kind of a, a quiet person, and I like to uh, be just out in nature and enjoy it. When I was diagnosed, I pretty much knew just because I had seen the mammogram and, and the, um, the resulting biopsy, and it just, it looked exactly like what I had read about. So I kind of thought, oh, okay, I know those clusters. I know what's gonna happen next. Get it, Barb, get it. Fishing is hope. The reward is always there. I jump in my car and I come up here and I look at this huge water and I'm like, okay, I've always been told if you ever fish water like this, don't look at it like a huge water. Break it down. It's something in life to remember. If it's too big, break it down and look at the elements of it. Look at each piece that makes the whole. So, I'm out here and I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to break it down. And then you find these people who know this river and they show you what you couldn't see before. It's like, oh, there's the element. And then they keep on telling you it's gonna explode. It's gonna be the most unreal thing that you've ever seen. And you're like, oh, the excitement's even bigger. Yeah, those big fish I saw on the internet. But it's kind of like, yeah, that happens to someone else, you know. It's going to be fun. It's going to be incredible. But I'm going to fish, and that's enough. But then it happens, and you're in it. And everything that everyone told you, but it didn't really come in to your consciousness fully, you stop, and the bugs are exploding, and the fish are in a frenzy, and the size of the fish, you don't see them, but you know by the sound that they're just lunkers.
just the feeling when I got there and I started casting was complete peace. Like that feeling you get in your life just a few times when you realize this is where I belong. This is an element of me that I can't ignore. In 2010, I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer, and so I've been going through treatments for almost six years. But through that, I've continued to fly fish because, like I said, uh, fly fishing is a way to kind of get away from it all. It uh, takes you in the outdoors. The, the outdoors are very healing to be standing in the water, and even if you're not, if you don't have your line in the water, you can just stand and and watch the birds and the otters and just kind of takes you away and it's naturally healing to have that water just flowing around you. It always feels really, really great. And uh, so I've tried to continue fishing as much as possible through that because like I said, that's kind of my way to get away from, from all the, the stress of it and everything. So They gave me five to eight years and that was back in, in 2010. And so the news yesterday wasn't good. Preparations are in order to get things done, but it's time and uh, it's been good. It's all been good. <laughs> so. People definitely need to take care of the outdoors and the environment. I know that it hurts our fisheries and our wildlife. I, I feel personally that the environment has contributed to the amount of cancer that we have and other diseases. Um, the pesticides and, and all of the different things that get dumped into our rivers and our lands. I really feel that that has contributed to um, all the things going on. I, I think that there are some things that we need to do to be better um, protectors of our environment. I just think we need to personally take a better look at how we eat and how we prepare our food for our own bodies. And in turn, those foods and how they're grown affect the environment as well for other species. The air and water we breathe and drink is affected and it affects all of us. Mm -hmm.